Hello there, Matt here with 5280 Armory. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to be breaking down one of Canik's newest ones, the MC9. This process is going to be very simple, as it should be. Overly engineered, complex designs just don't do well in this day and age. Long gone are the times, such as around the turn of the century, for example, where some firearms were so complex that without experienced gunsmiths or being sent back to the factory, simple things like routine maintenance just simply couldn't be done. The good news is, is, of course, you probably figured out that's not going to be the case with the MC9. In addition to the manual that all pistols and rifles get, shotguns for that matter as well, Canik sends a simple two-sided laminated card, one side disassembly, the other side assembly. The disassembly side has four steps. Once again, this is going to be a pretty simple process. And one more quick thought before we move on. I find myself continuously impressed. These, these guys are really listening to what the American customer wants. It isn't just the simplicity of having a two-sided assembly disassembly card or the addition of another card that's going to tell you what's in the tool kit, the pieces and parts, identifying them, what they're for. But they really do give us quite a bit to start with. A form-fitted case, an IWD holster, an extra floor plate, speed loader, the tool kit, the specialty tool for the takedown, get you started with the cleaning kit and some extra back straps. Really pleased with these guys. And on that note, let, let's get started on tearing this down. All right, safety glass is on. Irregardless of how I disassemble and reassemble, the manual is the final word. Make sure you read it and follow it. Let's unload our weapon. Drop the magazine. Nothing in the mag. Quick visual check. Nothing in the chamber. I can even go one more step. Let's hold open. Use our finger to check. Now I've double checked and we're good. Let's make ourselves some room. Get the holster with it. We won't need that. In the unboxing video, we talked about how the, the takedown latches were similar in design to Glock, but these are oversized, so that's going to make it a little bit easier to use. And I'll drop my slide. The striker is in the cock position, and these will move downwards, but I still have to pull the trigger in order to push it forward to take it off. Now I'm going to put the slide back on to demonstrate something different. When it, the striker is not in the cock position, you have to pull your slide back like you do a Glock a little bit, hang on to it so you can depress these takedown latches. That's different than the way it was when the striker was in the cock position. And I also don't have to pull the trigger this time around when it's in the uncocked position. So I haven't quite had the time to figure that one out, but there is a difference between the striker being cocked or uncocked. Oh, and one other thing real quick about the slide. When you're taking it off, like a Glock, you would think that you were just supposed to push it straight forward until it came off the frame. If you push on this too hard, you're going to think you got it stuck. Instead, you only push it forward about a half inch, a little bit more, and it'll line up with some relief cuts in the slide that match up with the rails. So you pull it forward half inch and then up and off the frame. Now with the two separated, we're not going to disassemble the frame anymore. So we'll set that to the side. Now we're going to take the recoil rod and spring assembly away by pressing it forward on the silver, silver board, we'll call it a button. We're going to press forward right here, pull it up and out. This is self-contained. There's no reason to take this apart. Pull our barrel forward and up and away from the the slide. That's really all the farther we need to disassemble for field stripping so we can get it all cleaned up and we'll just simply put it back together in reverse. After it's cleaned, barrel goes in first, back where it locks in. Now if you try to put this assembled recoil rod and spring in incorrectly, let's demonstrate. I'll intentionally try to put it in backwards and show you that it's just not going to go together correctly. Let's switch it around. 
This black piece, in this case it's black, is going to go to the front, the muzzle end. The silver part is going to go to the breech end. Just push it in place. And I'll demonstrate what's different about why it won't work the other way around. I'll exaggerate just a bit by, by pushing this rod forward a bit so you can see that without it being able to go forward just a bit, it won't lock into the little half moon shape right there. It doesn't take much, but that's what's going to get it all put back together correctly. And then we will line up the rails with the relief cut that is in the slide. And we're back on function test. All right, so that part's good. So now let's do something you're definitely not going to do every time you uh, field strip, but it's, it's nice to know how to do it. Grab this specialty tool that's in the kit here. We're going to take off the back plate so we can get to the striker. With the skinny end, there's a button right up here at the top, right here. I'm going to press this down. Start to pull my back plate off. I know I'm covering this up, so maybe I'll just put a, a still photo to give a better shot. So what I ended up doing is pulling my end plate completely off the back end here. Now that's going to allow me to pull the striker assembly out. This is going to get dirty, but it doesn't get so dirty that you need to do it very often. And I'm sure this comes apart, but we're not going to do that. It is designed to be kept together. You can kind of tell the way they've done it. They really don't want you taking it apart if you don't have to. All right, so we'll get that cleaned up. Put it back in reverse. Now with my end plate, I'm going to find where the, the dado is right there and just get it started. Push this down. Probably can do, do the start with my fingertips. If not, let's use the tool. Now I've captured it. It's not able to go all the way in because I still need to push it just a little bit further, but I captured it enough with the end plate. I'm holding on to it with my thumb. Now I can find that tiny little button, push it down, and then it snaps back together. So that's something you won't do every time, but it's nice to know that you can when you have to. Next, let's say we don't like the back strap, so we need to change that out. Once again, we're gonna use this tool, find a good spot on the bench, I like to think that we don't need any extra tools, so let's uh, see how this goes. I'm going to have this hanging off just a bit, and let's see if I can push the crush pin out with just, just hanging on to the frame and pushing downward. I heard it hit the ground, so I know it's out. So pulling down, down and away. The new back strap, it just simply goes, tab goes into the interlocking hole right here and then push straight forward. I've located my crush pin. Sometimes one of the ends will have a little bit more of a tapered side than the other. I guess we'll go with this one. Start to insert it into the hole. Once again, I want to try to do this without having any tools. I don't have any leverage in this position, but so we can see, I'm going to use the specialty tool and start pushing down. And it is going in fairly easy, and then it just took off like a rocket there, and I pushed it out almost through the other side. Well, let's try something different. Maybe some taps. That's working a little bit better. They want us to get that somewhat centered, so let's try a little bit better. A couple more taps. I think that's good. Okay, so that's all there is to changing the back straps. Now let's get this top plate off. And this tool kit is going to be what we need. Torx. Looks like it's going to be the smaller bit. Yep. This is actually your wrench. Not just a keychain. Now let's get these two screws out. That's nice. They're not... Uh, not heavily thread locked. Now in the manual, they say to use a punch other than what they've supplied. This is going to be too too big to push that plate off. Now you probably could pry it off, but then you're just going to scratch it up and get upset with yourself. So let's just let's just grab a different punch and looks like that one's going to be good. 
Now we can push this off without damaging the finish. There we go. Now we covered this in the first video where Tanik stated that all sites, with the exception of the Trijicon, I think it was the RMRCC, is going to go right on here. I just happen to have a hollow sun here. Okay, the holes are definitely matching up. So that's a good start. Now they say not to use the factory screws. They send screws. And there's also two more lock washers here too as well. well let's just uh, see what size we're going to need here. I'm going to start with that one. Sticks through just enough that it's going to grab a few threads. Well, that was easy enough, I must say. I did choose this hollow sun because it's one that everybody does like and color matches. And it does co witness very nicely. Good job. So, the last thing that we're going to do is reverse the magazine release. Now, this is one of those things that's far easier to dismantle than it is to put back together. I'm going to grab my needle nose. Just pull out the spring, so that's easy enough. And then we will pull out the mag release itself, reverse it, because they sent it as right-handed. Okay, so I'm sure there's many ways that you can do this, and it would certainly be nice to have a jig, you know, something that the manufacturer would have, but what I've got is a pair of needle nose, and I'm just gonna simply squeeze this and, and get it put back in that way. Here's a close-up of what the spring looks like. And next, a close-up of what the magazine release button looks like. And now for you hecklers out there, we are aware that the spring and button are outside of the frame. So just bear with us as we're just trying to show the proper way the spring is to be installed with the magazine release button itself. This picture will show the capturing slot that the spring itself is going to be housed in. It's not easy to get the spring to stay in there when the legs of the spring are not yet inserted into the proper hole, so be patient. And this last picture shows the spring being pushed down into its final resting place. Simple theory, but it's probably going to take you a few tries to get it. So good luck. And getting it in with the needle nose is not the easiest thing I've ever done. But it's in. Make sure we push it down. And now we have a left-handed version of a Canic MC9. Let's get her put back together. Function test again, optic on. All right, I think we're good to go. Well, thanks for joining us. And do remember, we're gonna have this pistol for rent and for sale down at the shop. It's been a couple weeks since our unboxing video, so they're starting to get to be a little bit more plentiful. Come on down, take a look, maybe take it out to the range, and, and we'll probably have one for purchasing when you come down as well. 5280 Armory, Colorado's Gun Shop, and we'll see you soon. Hey, and don't forget, if you like watching videos about firearms and supporting your Second Amendment, or you're from another country in which you had a Second Amendment, do us a big favor. Hit that subscribe button so we can keep this channel going. And thanks for watching.